Hello, welcome to Real Film Snobs. I'm Angela Yeager. Oh, that makes me Brian Michael. Uh, we have a fantastic show for you today. We have uh, a film that got a ton of Oscar nominations, a film that should have gotten a ton of an Oscar nominations, a film that's in theaters uh, as, uh, now, a documentary that got nominations as well, and then a film that, well, I just can't wait to get to it <clears throat> because we're going to talk about how Angela slept through most of it. But she we watched it. It's okay. The clip you saw at the top of the show is from 1917. This is a big, huge surprise hit and Oscar-nominated film um, that surprised a lot of people, especially those who went out and saw it. Um, this tells the story of two uh, soldiers who are given a mission who are to go out and prevent an attack. And uh, what's known about this film is that it's supposed to look like one single take, which sounds exciting, especially because it's an amazing uh, uh, cinematographer. It's a renowned director or known director. And uh, then you get in the movie and you realize they're going to walk and we're going to walk along with them. And we're going to walk and then we're going to walk some more. And then we're <laughs> going to walk some more. And then they're going to talk about cherry pits. And then they're going to walk some more. And then some things happen. And then night happens and it's gorgeous and it's amazing and it's beautiful. And then we walk some more. Um, you know, in theory, I just thought this was going to be such an amazing idea because we saw the making of, you know, the, the different, uh, you know, uh, previews for this movie. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was going to be really cool because I've seen some things, you know, where it's a single take and it's something that's really magnificent. Birdman. You think of, like, Birdman, you think of, like, Goodfellas mm -hmm. and really cool. Well, in this movie, when things are happening, you don't notice it because you're watching the things that are happening. And then when nothing is happening, you're looking for it and you're like, yeah, we're just, we're following along. Well, people are, are walking mm -hmm. and, and talking. There, you know, for a war <clears> film, it wasn't that exciting until that night scene. Um, there was a couple things that happened that was that I thought was really uh, interesting. Um, there's a plane crash that was fascinating, but for the most part, I just was I was kind of bored and yeah. just kind of looking around like, is anyone else is, you know, is anyone else excited like, around here? I, I'm just I'm bored. Yeah, surprising for because war as a genre is one that's you know supposed to bring you in emotionally. It's a very emotional subject, as yeah. it should be. Uh, a coworker of mine saw this over the weekend, and I waited to, you know, to say what I thought of it until he had a chance to say it. And when he came in uh, at work, I said, what did you think of it? And he said, I thought it was rather sterile. And that was a good word for it, I thought, mm. because you don't get emotionally invested in the characters. There's really only mm. two main characters, so there's plenty of time as they're walking yeah. to, to develop some character, and there's nothing. And I think part of the problem is this is what happens when you put the technical aspect of a movie before the story and the character development. Yeah. I mean, the, the the you know, it's great to have this like technical achievement, but that should have been in service of the story. And it seems like they kind of thought of that first, and then said, "Okay, how are we going to achieve that? Oh, we'll just have the two characters walking, and then occasionally something will happen. But it's all, but we've got to be able to keep our tracking shots a certain way, and we've got to be able to shoot it this certain yeah. way, rather than thinking of, oh, here's this great story. How can we make that happen and still achieve some cool technical things?" You know, I think about Saving like Saving Private Ryan, a great war movie that has a real emotional heart, mm. but it has some pretty good technical aspects to at it. At the beginning, at the end, and then they walked in the middle of that They one. walked in the one <laughs> middle, but you cared about those characters. You put yes. an actor like Tom sure. Hanks in there, you care about what happens. You put Matt Damon in there, you care about what happens. Sure. You have a little bit more plot going on a little bit. I mean, one thing Spielberg's good at is... To, you know, getting you into the human aspect, and war is nothing if not the half. Well, what do I what do I always talk about in the films? What's my favorite shot in a, in a movie? It's a close up. You got to have a close up. You got to see some faces. You got to see interaction. You have to yeah. be able to connect through someone's eyes. You you have to be able to see that. We don't get a lot of that because we're walking again. We're walking, and you know when when the tracking shot does work, and we've seen it in the in the previews, which kind of give it away that there's one soldier um, uh, that's that's running along, and all the explosions are happening around him. And I'm like, yeah, that's you know what most movies would kind of do something similar to that. And there's one long tracking shot, and and that was the whole thing. It just yeah, it just seems like a, it's a gimmick of a, 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 a gimmick thing, but is we a don't, good word for yeah, it. Yeah, it's a gimmick, and it just doesn't work in terms of yeah, an emotional level or a connect a connection. I couldn't tell you the characters' names. I could tell the two apart because one was a little chubbier than the other one. But, that's but for about the most it. part, you've got hats down and. You know, there's there's a wonderful scene with a, a French woman that happens in the film, and I gave anything away, and that was a great scene. I really enjoyed that one, though we didn't get many close-ups, so it kind of stood back a little bit. But it, mm -hmm. the camera stops, yeah, 
and we sit and we have the interaction between the two characters, between the two actors. Right, they aren't walking. Are it's happening. the only part of the movie he's not yeah. walking, it seems like, or when he's not knocked out. But yeah, yeah, no, that was a pretty good scene, but it's not enough for me to recommend no. the movie, unfortunately. And yeah. it's really disappointing. You know, this is supposedly now maybe the front runner to win Best Picture, and it's so disappointing. Not as bad as Green Book from last year, but very disappointing because it's been a great year for movies, and to just see something win just because it's sort of non-controversial and fairly technically impressive, uh, it's just... And there doesn't have to be women in it? <laughs> I guess. Technically, if it's well, there is true one. story, there's there one, yeah. One, but... Technically, they're like, well, we can't help it. We, have, we could try to put a woman in there, but there's no uh, no point that we can't do it. It's not uh, historically accurate. Yeah, it was just such a... <laughs> yeah, it just seemed like yeah. such a non... Yeah, it's just very, very lifeless movie, strangely. Yeah, you know, I thought maybe I could recommend it. I thought maybe it was going to be three stars, but when someone from work was like, oh, yeah, I thought it was great, and I was like, no! Then you thought, oh, no, that's definitely <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. That's, me. that's definitely what I don't like. So um, let's go on. Should we move on? Please, sure. can we move on? Let's move on to our uh, next movie. Uh, it's A Hidden Life by Terrence Malick, or as I like to think, uh, hey, everyone's put up their best films of the year. You think you made your top ten list? Hold my beer. Let's take a look. Now, I don't get to uh, pick the clips of the show because Angela, Angela does that because she does everything. I just show up. And um, I'm just hoping and praying that, that, that you get an, a, a little glimpse of what this film looks like and what it does to you when you see it. When this film started, and I'll get into the plot here in just a second. It was a Terrence Malick film, so it doesn't really matter. When this film started, I started laughing, and then I gasped. And then it was like, wow, because the picture, the, the quality, the, the shot of it, it just looks absolutely amazing. This film takes place in the, uh, the Alps in, in Austria, where you have the Alps literally on one side, and it's this beautiful green valley. And I mean the most green of valleys you've ever seen. Malik loves his grass. And he we're set on a we're set on a farm, and in the first five minutes, it establishes it's a farm. It's in Austria. Here's a ha husband and wife. They have children. Her sister moves in. His his uh, mother moves in, and they love one another. The these two love one another more than anything, and they love their family, and they love farming, and they have a community, and it's all practically done with practically no no words whatsoever. It's all moving. It's all show because it's a, it's a picture show, and um, in five minutes, it establishes everything that you need to know. And then, of course, there, it's Austria. It's, oh, and I mentioned it's the 1930s. Hitler comes into power. And uh, even though he's done his time in the army, now that Hitler has taken over, um, they're going to be doing it. They're going to be having everyone join the army for the wrong reasons, he feels. And he says, no. And that's what the film is about, him standing on his moral ground saying, no, I will not vow to, to, or bow or vow to Hitler. I will not do this. And he's pers persecuted for it. Um, along the way, we just it's just stunning. Uh, yeah. Emotionally and and visually, I, with this movie, I thought was two hours and fifteen minutes, and I thought, well, maybe a little fifteen minutes too long. No, it's a three-hour movie. It's three so hours. It so it's two uh, two hours and forty-five mm -hmm. minutes of pure entertainment. Fifteen minutes, I thought maybe no. It's this is beautiful. This is absolutely fantastic. This is his third best film, I would say, which is pretty amazing when you talk about Wait, when so you talk where, about Terrence what Malick. is above this one? So you uh, well, of, no, see, I would put Days of I, I would days put Days of, of Heaven. Heaven, and then I would uh, Days of Heaven, and then Tree of Life, and then this one. I might put this above Tree of Life. And that's so, fine. So, yeah, it's a great film. Um, the, um, the amount of character development he does without really um, <laughs> having a lot of words. You know, you, no. we compare this with 1917, where I could have cared less what happened to either of the two central characters. You really only have primarily two central characters here. There are yeah. lots of other people surrounding them in their yes. community. The mayor of the town, uh -huh. who's very, you know, kind of pro-Hitler, and he has some sort of things with him. The priest, who's a great character. Um, but really, the the Franz and Fanny, the husband and wife, are the two main characters. But they they establish these characters so well. You really get, they love each other. That, Like you said, they love their community. They love farming. Who wouldn't love that? Oh, my God. You know, they're it's, basically in the garden. Did you hear me gasping and, and giggling through this whole movie? I don't movie? know if we, I can remember if we, I maybe, uh, oh. but they are literally in a place that looks sort of like Garden Eden. and he has everything to lose. All oh, he yes. has to do is sign a pledge saying, yep. you know, swearing, um, you know, allegiance to, yeah, to Hitler. Hitler. Yeah. You know, it's not even about fighting in the war because they even said, yeah. oh, they even tried to give him an out. Well, we'll sign you to the hospital. You won't have to fight. All you have to we do need is sign. Farmers. We, yeah, we yeah. need farmers. So, and we will yep. sign you to the hospital. All you have to do is sign this pledge to Hitler. And he says, no, I won't do it, knowing it's going to cost him everything. Everything. And his family everything. Yeah. And it's it's huge. It's a it's a spiritual movie. It's, it's very moral and philosophical. It's beautiful. And it says so much more about standing 
standing your ground and having a conscious and making moral decisions in a lot of movies I've seen in recent years. I mean, yeah. he's really, I think, also saying something about recent times, you know, like having the courage to yeah. to stand up to what's right. Well, you know, it's funny because you sit there and, you you know, a great movie will make you put in their place and go, God, what do you do? And I'm thinking, gosh, you know, you, you are going to lose everything. What's well, just a pledge? It's just, oh, it's Hitler. Well, that's right. I'm like, yeah, it's not like it's, oh, it is people, Hitler. I feel like would have signed oh, it. Oh, boy. I mean, maybe, you know, well, ourselves included. I mean, if uh, you oh, yeah. know it's going to be oh. this or death, and all you have to do is sign it. Yeah. You don't have to believe. Even the priest tells him. Yeah. You don't have to believe it. God will know what's in your heart. Yeah. You don't have to. And he said, no, I can't do it, you know, because yeah. it's still wrong. So when I so, think of this film, not only the, that and going back and forth morally in, in, in your head, but I think of them holding hands. They just can't help but touch one another and wanted to kiss one another and hold yeah, one another. Couple, and yeah. digging their hands in the dirt together, which is a, was a beautiful image. Um, I like that there are some family members that kind of have a conflict of interest and start to pushing, start pointing, uh, pointing the finger of blame of what's going on. Mm -hmm. But I also like that she, as we're going along with his stuff, and I thought, gosh, we're not going to lose her are we she's just not going to be in the sidelines then we go back to her and we're seeing what she's going through and what she's happening to throughout which was and she's uh, having to do all the work as well. i mean oh it's yeah a huge sacrifice yeah so he made a choice on her behalf which her sister points out to her you know he made this choice for you too and she says well i know but i have to stand by him and it's not exactly a stand by your man type of thing it oh, sort of is but it's yeah. also you know she's doing the work and the farming and she you know she understands where he's coming from and what he's doing there i mean yeah. but you know angela what I mean, the movie could have been done with like 10 title cards this could have been a silent film it practically yeah they is. do have a lot of the typical malik voiceover which um, almost yes yeah and i don't it mind is that interesting you know one criticism i've seen of the film is the fact that you know it's, it's set in austria they could have been speaking there's some german sure, and then yeah. the voiceover is all yeah. in english you know, sure. I almost kind of had the thought, like, well, maybe if they had just done it all in German, it could have been nominated for Best Foreign Language Film, and at least it maybe it would have got more attention than it did. <laughs> I don't know, because somehow this movie um, didn't get yeah. the attention it deserved. I don't yeah. understand why. I'm sure someone tried to explain it to Terrence, and he doesn't does not care. Yeah. But this is an absolutely this is so, beautiful film. It's so great to film. see him working in the context of a story again, too. Yes. His last few films were just people running around couple, and with no idea what was They looked was like going long on. form perfume ads, and I was so disappointed. Yeah, so, so it's really great yeah. to see him it, you know, have a, a bit of a, you know, it's, there is a story here and some characters, okay. but still lend his So the most important eye. question I want to ask you is, Four stars. Right? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, oh my stars, God! Yeah. Please tell me you give you a four yeah, stars. Four stars for me. Yeah, yeah. Definitely four stars. Yes, definitely okay. must see. Seek it if you can on the big screen because I would say oh, this is man, one that you really have demands to see it, it on the big so. screen. So it's really disappointing that it didn't yeah. get enough acclaim. So uh, moving on to our next movie, uh, which is uh, Just Mercy, starring Michael B. Jordan as a young lawyer who decides to take on the cases of death row inmates in Alabama. Um, he starts this work, I believe, in the early 90s, um, and it's based on a true story. Jamie Foxx, in a fantastic supporting role, I hadn't seen Jamie Foxx on the screen in a little while, uh, plays Walter McMillan, um, one of the main cases that he decides to take on as someone who, to him, once he starts looking into the files, seems pretty obviously innocent and decides to take his case on yeah. and finds himself going up against the system in Alabama, pretty heavy duty. Um, Brie Larson also co-stars. This is uh, director um, Daniel Destin Cre Creighton, I might be mispronouncing his last name, who previously did Short Term 12 and The Gas Glass Castle with Brie Larson, so he's worked with her quite a yes. bit. And, um, you know, I was pretty excited about this movie. This is another one that got had some great performances and it just sort of lost in the shuffle of the Oscar year. What I liked about this movie, I mean, for one thing, you have great performances. Um, but because it's more of a little bit of a modern take, we've seen this type of story done before. In fact, I think our friend oh, yeah. Scott, I went and saw it with him, and he said, oh, we've seen this kind of movie, the lawyer marching in sure, sure. and trying to save the day. But yeah. it's always been Matthew McConaughey or Sandra Bullock or someone uh -huh. like that. And this is a person, you know, of color from, not from this community, but from a different community who has a personal connection to fighting injustice um, for it's african -Americans. It's not the white savior, Angela. You can say that. It's not the white savior. <laughs> it's not the white savior. <laughs> no, it's not. So, and I liked that about the movie, but he's still yeah. an outsider. He was Harvard educated. He's from the East Coast. So he, and there's a bit of suspicion in him when he first comes in. And I, and I liked that aspect. Even the Jamie Foxx characters are like, I've already talked to a bunch of lawyers. Nobody can do anything. Thing for me, the system is right. Last rich. guy said that. Uh, this is, you know, this is really funny that we took the, the first film, 1917, gimmick, and then the Hidden Life. We're talking about how we're, we're heavy handed, oh, not heavy handed, but you can really see a director's perspective. And then we get to this film where I, I kind of like, I just, I didn't see any seams. It feels like I've seen a, a many court dramas, and I know that when they made this film, they watched all of them. And so there's certain beats that, you, yeah, you kind of have to, but 
there's never been, and there's no grandstanding. There is a big speech at the end, opening statement at the end. That could be considered a speech, mm -hmm. but it's so low key and I down know. and matter of fact. Um, and uh, the way that, it, you know, blocking the gaze of someone and looking someone else in the eye and then now tell me what, you know, now tell me. Mm -hmm. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. That um, poor actor. I'm it's, sorry. Oh, he always plays those characters. great performances and he's fantastic in yeah. this as well. But Michael B. Jordan, I mean, here he is, you know, here's the big star, guys. We've all, you know, who's seen Creed um, know this. And, um, but yeah, this film was just, it just went along so easy. It just had such an easy flow yeah. about it. It had it was just a lyrical, it was, uh, you know, it didn't feel like there was any kind of filmmaking happening whatsoever. It, you know, in fact, it felt kind of boring at times because it was, not that it was, but because there wasn't any fantastical over the top that you kind of expected. I thought, oh, yeah. oh, we're just going to play this. It's not a John Grisham lawyer courtroom yeah. type thing. Where and they it have was the big, so, that's like, really refreshing to see know. because they're real you can't people. can't handle the truth. <laughs> and if you know any lawyers, they're like, you can't do that. In the, you don't do that in the court. That doesn't happen in the court. No one does that in right. the court. And so I really enjoyed that. And I like this filmmaker an awful lot. I love Short Term 12. It was fantastic. Uh, film and I love seeing Brie Larson, you know, bring her star power into to try to get this yeah, attention. Yeah, to take a pretty small, you know, thankless role yeah. in some ways. Yeah. But um, and so did Jamie Foxx as well. So yeah, I think this was just such a, a wonderful film. And then and then what I really enjoyed is you had some stuff during the credits, just like you do with a big major superhero movie. If you sit through the credits, you're going to get more information on. And there's some um, amazing stuff in the Almost a whole other uh, movie about the other man. Yeah. Who's, um, there was another character. He's a very yeah. small character in the movie, but you find out at the end what happened to him yeah. after 30 yeah. years on Death Row. So it's pretty There's amazing. There's O'Shea Jackson Jr. who's yeah. very good in that and knows very a good, good. script. Yeah. Uh, impressive management there. But um, yeah, this was, uh, yeah, I said in the film, oh, gosh, you know, there wasn't, I couldn't, I, I couldn't find a flaw in the film. There's nothing I didn't like. It's it was very seamless. Very, yeah. yeah, and it's not, I don't think it's a four star film like Hidden Life, but I thought three and a half because it's so yeah. solid. It's really, really just a great piece So this piece was the last year? This was considered last year? It opened, it actually, same as 1970, and it opened ah, limited nuts. New York and LA and um, on oh, Christmas Day. Bad. And then they did yeah. a wide release later, but I just felt yeah. like it just got, you know, yeah, bypassed. Just, yeah. Jamie Foxx, I thought, was so good in this. There was a scene where he sort of goes from riding high when he thinks that things are going to go his Fantastic. way because yeah, yeah. Michael B. Jordan's character just lays out the case yeah. and it's sort of like a no-brainer that this oh, guy's innocent. No -brainer. So he's kind of thinking, yeah. okay, they're going to let me free. And then yeah. the judge comes back in and gives him these news and his reaction during that scene I thought was really powerful. I was pretty impressed. I would say I was almost pr more impressed with his acting in this than in Ray. So. Yeah. So very disappointing to see it not getting more attention. Yeah, fantastic film. So we'll move on uh, to our next movie, uh, which is uh, Her Fresh Picks. And this is another Oscar-nominated movie. This is a documentary about a traditional beekeeper in Macedonia whose way of life is threatened when a nomadic family moves in next door. So this is a movie for anyone who's ever had bad neighbors and can relate <laughs> with the neighbors oh. from hell. So, because yeah. that, and it makes your, you know, whatever complaint you have about your neighbor playing their stereo too loud, uh, you watch this movie you think well at least I'm not this poor lady because these people come in and um, destroy her entire way of life her ways of making a living because she is this amazing beekeeper. Oh you really she, are selling this Angela people want to see this movie now. <laughs> she goes in and well so one of the things that's interesting about this movie it, so for one thing for the Oscars it got nominated for best documentary and best foreign language film which is the first time in history that that's happened yeah. that both those categories and I think there's a good reason why this movie yeah. I really enjoyed it. I um when it started, probably 15, 20 minutes in, you turned to me and said, this is a documentary. It does not feel yeah, like a documentary. Not, yeah. If you're not a fan of documentaries or you don't think you are, if you're kind of used to like the maybe PBS style, watch this. Give this movie a chance. Yeah. I was riveted. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, what I really loved about with her and her farm and then she had it with her hive and that she was very delicate with this. She understood this was nature. She sang to the bees and she always said, what did she 50%. say? 50%. 50%. You she take 50% for me and 50% for them because they need something to have. They need something to live. This family comes in and they're trying to farm in the worst ways possible. They're, they're literally cow, the worst farmers. With, yeah, with, with cows and with chicken and they're terrible and they're all. And their way of they're all, they're working just with the cows way they, is to kick them. The way, yeah, awful. the way they communicate is, is to yell and scream at one another there's no harmony whatsoever she's next door with her ailing mother that's it's a beautiful wonderful relationship that she has with her mother and her bees and they come in and they just they 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 ruin everything that they're trying to do and then she takes one of their their uh, kids in kind of puts them under her wing and kind of shows them how the bees how things work and then of course you know things are going to go bad 
Um, this is, but it teaches that that balance in life. That you know, she has this yeah. uh, seniority. She has this wisdom that you, you get to see. It's so beautifully told, and it does not feel like a documentary whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I really, not that I don't like anything, but don't I like documentaries. But it was just so beautiful. And this is a film I've talked more and more about. I thought, oh, it's three and a half stars. It'll be three and a half stars. I'm giving it four. And I keep talking about it, and I keep telling everybody, and I keep talking about the biggest little farm. And I was like, well, you know, this balance thing that you got to understand. I mean, that's. All I kept thinking about with it's a great double feature. So if you're, you know, it's uh, on streaming and you watch the Biggest Little Farm and and uh, Honeyland, and you're gonna have a wonderful, yeah. beautiful. Uh, In a way, I feel like. And the then the name... farming with Hidden Life. So yeah, there really, you go. Now Lots if you have farming. seven hours. But so yeah, seven hours. Seven hours all together. You know, it's interesting. I think the name, you know, because I think when I first heard about Honeyland, you know, when it first came out in theaters, I thought, oh, it's just some documentary about beekeepers. Bee, well, and the importance <laughs> of bees and our ecosystem, yeah. which is all important information, yes. but I kind of thought, I already know about that. I know the bees are in trouble, yeah. but I didn't know it was going to be so personalized to this woman and her yes. journey. And so I feel like the name is a little misleading. Yeah. Maybe the, a different name. I don't know what it could have been, but that's not my job to name movies. Did but. you follow? Do you always do your homework. Do you know what happens? Do you know what she's doing now? Is she I have not. Oscars? I did not I look so. up her, but I was curious because of some of the things that she got I thought how did they how did they get this footage because as you mentioned when the family first arrives you said well they just allowed them to so you know they were already filming her it was originally supposed to be yeah. sort of an environmental documentary about you know um, uh, environmental preservation in Macedonia so that wasn't planned but the filmmakers were filming for three years with this woman living on her land and then these people showed up and this happened uh, so it's sort of like filmmaking gold not for her and her poor life but for a filmmaker yeah. like oh all of a sudden there's this conflict that enters into the film with these no this nomadic family and they're not like the family is like they're not well poorly intentioned they no. just really I mean you know you could live next door to them in America really I mean it could be the people next door you know that just kind of leave their yard trashy or you know don't really they're they're overwhelmed with their own lives and not paying attention to what they should be doing so yeah, yeah. Oh, Great film. A beautiful film, yeah, oh, absolutely beautiful. Uh, so we'll move on to the next segment, which will be The Buried Treasures. Uh, this is Ulysses from 1967. This is the story of two separate Dublin uh, wanderers, Leopold Bloom and Stephen Dedalus, uh, let's see, struggling uh, to control their personal lives. Uh, this is a film I just watched Angela sleep through. A good chunk of it. It happens. Hey, just the middle. Just it the middle. It happens. We have lunch. The we watch the movie. We have. I have two couches. We both lay down on the couch and watch it. And some one of us falls asleep. It's usually me. But um, actually, we found it on YouTube. It was a better quality than than the the disc that we had well, able to find. The, however, we were able to find it. This is a really hard to find film. It was on Roger Ebert's top ten list. Which in the early ones, boy, there are really rough films on this one. And. Um, uh, it was in focus. And it was in black and white, and it just kind of was rambled it black on and, white? and on. Yeah, wasn't it black and white? Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh I even went back. We and saw this two weeks ago, and I don't remember anything well, about this movie. Well, what I remember movie. is there's a lot of voiceover, but unlike Terrence Malick, it's not accompanied with great. Oh no, the last part just oh, it was like someone just reading. And you mentioned someone just yeah. reading from the book. Yeah, that's pretty much. So what it's it was it's like with it's a random it's images. an adaptation of James Joyce's <laughs> Ulysses, which is a modern novel done in stream of consciousness style. And there's a reason that, like Virginia Woolf, um, another author, you know, I I have an English. Um, I, I know about these authors. <laughs> I've read these authors. Yeah. There's a reason they don't adapt these into movies. Yeah. Stream of consciousness does not make for good filmmaking because it's like watching someone just ramble whatever is on top of their head, which could make for a great novel, but does not make for great cinema. <laughs> I just wanted Kirk Douglas to come in and, and start fighting with a sword. Really, that's what I was looking forward to, and this was not that movie. <laughs> no, or any anyone fighting actually would have been interesting. Just it, people Yeah, it's just people kind of run around, and, around and, and babbling, and then, the, you know, he has a wife that doesn't... And there uh, was sort of like this anti-Semitic thread, you know, where people in England or in, in Ireland were complaining about the Jewish people, Yeah. and Leopold Bloom, the main character, is Jewish, but it didn't really go anywhere. I mean, there's nothing... I don't really know what the point of that was or what, how that was supposed to impact Honestly, his character. Since last, last year at Mary and Bod, have we ever been so lost in a review? At least that had I beautiful just, images. <laughs> and I did fall asleep in the middle and then I went back and yeah. rewatched the middle you and I back. still couldn't tell you what happened in this movie. <laughs> you were asleep and I thought, I should wake you up because you always wake me up. But I thought, eh, that's funny. You're it's like, fine. it's fine. You know, she doesn't really so need to know So far she's not missing about. anything. And then it ended. I was like, oh, whoops. <laughs> I did up. watch the <laughs> ending. I woke up around the time that his wife started ranting about him. And that was the whole last yeah. 20 minutes of the movie. It's his wife's rant. This movie Ooh, there's was a reason why some movies are lost. <laughs> just it has not aged well. And then I looked no. up the director, Joseph Strick, to see if he had done anything else no. I'd heard of and no. 
No. Yeah, not. Although uh, Milo O'Shea, who plays the lead character, has been in a ton of stuff. I mean, yeah. he was just like in hundreds of movie, TV television. Shows. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So great, great <laughs> character. Milo O'Shea, there's the, there's there's the a, takeaway. <laughs> great actor. Did lots of work over the oh, years. Oh, my watch goodness. One of his other 150 credits other than this. Oh, okay. So, okay. So let's wrap up the show. So 1917, another, uh, another one of us can recommend. But you're going to go see it. So just you see Hidden Life. Uh, just If you're going to see 1917, then promise me you'll see Hidden Life. Trust me. Trust me. Trust me. Um, and if, well, if you don't, that's okay. Uh, we both highly recommend Hidden Life. Uh, we both highly recommend Just Mercy, uh, and as well as Honeyland. Wow, see, it's that time of year where all those movies are starting to catch no, up with us. And then nice... Ulysses, it'll stay buried. Um, uh, <laughs> it'll stay buried. Let's, let's, let's hope so. So, um, let's see, where's my little notes here? So, uh, we, of course, uh, want you to check out our previous episodes and reviews on realfilmsnobs.com. You subscribe to us on YouTube. Make sure to hit the little bell so you're notified. Follow us on Twitter. Listen to us on KMUZ. Watch us on CCTV in Salem, CAM, and Corvallis. Scan at in Silverton. I think our amazing sponsors, our hardworking crew, and my wonderful co-host, uh, co as well as you. Have a great day and have great movies. Thank you.